Kunsei's Comet. See, they say they had an orbit of 3,065 years, last seen during the time of Ramses II in Egypt. Just thinking about Egypt because, you know, this great American, American eclipse is, you know, hitting that uh, towel, right? Hitting that Aleph, huh? Right over little Egypt and all that stuff, right? So I want to look with a dragonfly perspective, you know, you got to look in what they call the past sometimes to see the future. The Kumsi Comet then had an orbit of 3,065 years, right? And the comet we're about to really dig on, <laughs> they call the Devil's Comet. And some scientists say now, oh, it has an orbit of 71 years. <laughs> My question is, has this dragon, this dragon be getting closer and closer? <laughs> Orbiting closer, letting them know what time it is. I'm coming. I'm coming, boss. I'm right on time, boss. With the same comet today, have the same orbit as it would thousands of years ago. You know, this is the countdown. <laughs> A lot of my cons been telling me about that three body problem, man, and I'm digging on it. It's crazy, man. They got the sky blinking and all kind of projector <laughs> flow, right? They got a lot of interesting questions there <laughs> throwing out there, man. Um, 18, 11, 18, 12, right? And it's also called Napoleon's Comet. Kumse was the Shawnee, the Shikamagwa, the Khan whose name meant shooting star or dragon like dragon canoe. He who walks across the sky, eat the walking man. That's the cool say. And why is this important, man? Because a Takum say tragedy is an Israel tragedy. And this is the great book by George Jones, Tecumse, the prophet of the West. An historical there we go. An historical Israel Indian tragedy, my not. The life and history, General Harrison. President of the United States. And in this, he goes into detail where right? we got that before about how this is an Indian or Israel Indian tragedy because there was no separation between the tribes of these cons they were fighting. There was no separation between them and Israelites. He called him the chief of the forest, and he said that the aborigine is identical with the Israelite. So the part of the story they don't want to tell us about this Columbus and finding us here in America and who we are, the reason they don't want us to know who we are, because they we have to fess up to slaughtering Israelites to force convert us to Zeusism. Ezusism, right? Christianity. They wanted to put any type of energy on us that would get us out of our spiral, away from our frequency, out of cold, away from the Creator. So the history of the Indian in America is the history of the Israelite in America. In Copper Color Naga, they just found you here. Eight, ten, eleven, right? <laughs> Eight, ten, twelve. Strange happenings during these earthquakes. We don't know. I mean, sometimes they say an earthquake, big, big earthquakes happen around this comet situation. We got this comet, this same comet popping up now in the year of the dragon at the same time 
as the great American solar eclipse. Almost like the sky is going to get dark enough for us to really see it, you know. And if you were, you're in that path of totality, you're going to see some things, right? <laughs> Man. They say the Mississippi ran backwards during this comet, during these strange happenings. New Madrid earthquakes were the biggest earthquake in American history. They occurred in the central Mississippi Valley, cause <laughs> it's a lot going on with this Mississippi Valley, right? But were felt as far away as New York City, Boston, Montreal, Washington, D.C. President James Madison and his wife Dolly felt them in the White House. Church bells rang in Boston from December 16, 1811 through March of 1812. There were over 2,000 earthquakes in the central Midwest. This is a great American situation, my And between 6,000 and 10,000 earthquakes in the Bothiel of Missouri, where the New Madrid is located near the junction of the Ohio and Mississippi River. In the known history of the world, no other earthquakes have lasted so long or produced so much evidence of damage as the New Madrid earthquakes. Why? Just a natural phenomenon? Three of the earthquakes are on the list of America's top earthquakes. The first one on December 16, 1811, a magnitude of 8.1 on a Richter scale. The second on January 23rd, 1812, 7.8. The third on February 7, 1812, 8.8 magnitude. The Mississippi ran backwards, my nagas. After February 7th earthquake, boatmen reported that the Mississippi actually ran backwards for several hours. The force of the land upheaval 15 miles south of New Madrid created Real Foot Lake, drowned the inhabitants of an Indian village, turned the river against itself to flow backwards. Sounds like the plagues of Egypt, man, right? <laughs> Devastating thousands of acres of virgin forest and creating two temporary waterfalls in the Mississippi. Both men on flatboats actually survived this experience and lived to tell the tale. Yeah. Has the general area experienced more than 2,000 earthquakes in five months? Peep 2,000 earthquakes in five months. People discovered the most, most of the, that most of the crevices opened up during an earthquake ran from north to south. And when the earth began moving, they would chop down trees in the east-west direction and hold on using the tree as a bridge. There were missing people. <clears throat> who were most likely swallowed up by the earth. Some earthquake fissures were as long as five miles. The world's largest sand boy was created by the New Madrid earthquake. It was 1.4 miles long and 136 acres in extent, located in the Bothiel of Missouri, about eight miles west of Haiti, Missouri. There's a high, there's a Haiti, Missouri. Call, <laughs> locals call it the beach. Other much Smaller sand boils are found throughout the area. And on and on, right? They said lights flash from the ground caused by quartz crystals being squeezed. The phenomenon is called seismoluminescence. What? They got petroleum that has solidified. I mean, all this is happening. Distant thunder and loud explosions accompany the earthquakes like dragons popping off, like dragons popping off. The skies turn dark during the earthquake. So dark that lighted or lighted lamps didn't help. 
Whoa. Shout out to my Mississippi Nuggets. I got an aunt in Mississippi. She has land out there. And she's like, yeah, you know, you don't see no darkness until you come to Mississippi, boy. <laughs> It'd be so dark. It's darker than dark. You know what I'm saying? Like, can't imagine it, right? But during this 1811, 1812 comet, the skies turned dark, so dark that lighted lamps didn't help. The air smelled bad, and it was hard to breathe. It was speculated that it was small, containing dust particles caused by the eruption of warm water into cold air. People reported strange behavior by the animals during the earthquakes. They were nervous and excited. Domestic animals became wild, and wild animals became tame. Snakes came out the ground from hibernation. Flocks of ducks and geese landed near near people. They was tripping. So the earthquake was preceded by the appearance of a great comet. Talking about the Coombsays comet and the Battle of Tippecanoe. And on that map that had them migrating around the Holy Mountain of Harmonics, on that map, that Holy Mountain of Harmonics, that triangle that they were migrating about, talking about the Ishmaelites, wave surfers know, it had an X marked the spot. Touched the it touched where it says tip of canoe, so they put up their holy mountain harmonics right at this point. You know what I'm saying? Where Tecumseh and his brother and them were fighting and dying and all that. You know what I'm saying? Just swiping the energy of the land. So the earthquakes were preceded by the appearance of a great comet, which was visible around the globe for 17 months, man. Now, they didn't say how long we're going to see this comet this time, but I just need you to understand a little his story, right? <laughs> this comet was visible around or across the earth for over a year, man. You can still see it. And was at its brightest during the earthquake. It's got to do with the dragons. The comet with the orbit of 3,065 years was last seen during the time of Ramses II in Egypt. In 1811, 1812, it was called the Kumsay's Comet or Napoleon's Comet in Europe because they too <laughs> were seeing this comet. And he was, a, he was very afraid of this dragon. <laughs> the Kumsay was a Shawnee. Indian leader whose name meant shooting star or he who walks across the sky. He was given a name at birth, a great orator, military leader. This was Israel's last stand, my naga. This comment meant something, and for it to be returning again right now, it means something today. But our nagas don't look up, right? <laughs> They don't understand the connection between these signs and our Hebrew people, especially right here in India Superior. The Kumsay was trying to tribe up the 12 tribes of Israel. And the fact that these Nagas wouldn't tribe up and he had to fight against his own people who sided with the hijack and made treaties it became an Indian Israel tragedy, my night. It was your last great war, man. And this thing lasted all throughout the 1800s, early 1900s. Seminoles and Creeks and Texas Indian Wars and Cherokee this, Cherokee that, right? But this is what popped it off. Tacoom say, say, no more land, man. The hijack can't have no more land, man. We're not giving them no more land. No more of these treaties. What they say? What they say? The Kumsay organized a confederation of Indian tribes to oppose the takeover. How you feel about the takeover today, my nigga? 
of three million acres of Indian lands, what became way more than that, which were obtained by the Treaty of Fort Wayne, 1809. So this led up, man, to being the last straw, the last straw. <laughs> the coops, they said, no more, man. You just gave up how many acres? My uh, son was doing this report for his, uh, you know, they homeschool, but they still got to you know, technically follow whatever little curriculum. But, of course, we gave him the drop. <laughs> and uh, he was talking about the Louisiana Purchase. And I was like, yeah, $15 million. It says Napoleon sold all these states, like a dozen some states. And it, <laughs> it, uh, Equated out to being four pennies per acre. Per acre. And I was like, man, Joy World is about an acre. <laughs> Somebody give me four pennies for that. Thank you. Right. So that's that's what they felt about our land, man. And it wasn't even his to sell. He didn't have no authority to sell our land. It's two hijacks with stolen goods trying to work out a deal is all it was. Two hijacks with stolen goods trying to work out a deal. Recon the Louisiana Purchase. And how much of a deal, how much did he give out on his Treaty of Fort Wayne, man? I want to know how much land we gave away. I want to know why the Kumse was so mad, right? <laughs> the Kumse, why you mad, man? Why are you upset, the Kumse? Uh, they say 3 million acres of land in Ohio, Illinois, Indiana, Michigan for two cents per acre. Damn. So Napoleon wanted to double his shit. He said, I want it for four cents per acre. Your promised land is being auctioned off for two cents and four cents per acre. Treaty of Fort Wayne, the Treaty of Fort Wayne, sometimes called the 10 o'clock. Line Treaty, or the 12 Mile Line Treaty, is an 1809 treaty that obtained 29 million acres. I knew it was more than three. <laughs> wow. So this, man, this is what the say was mad about. You see what I'm saying? This is why he said this is Israel. This is promised land. You just gave away 30 milli for two cents. You just gave our birthright away. So they're gonna own it, they're gonna own our children's land. They're gonna own our children's children's land. They're gonna say they're from Africa, boss. They're not even gonna know they're indigenous to this land. They're going to have nothing to show for their birthright. They're going to have to come up. <laughs> They're going to have to come up from nothing. They're going to have to use paper, IOU, debt money, debt currency, fiat currency. They're going to have to use crypto. Because they don't got no land. You just gave $30 million up. In one treaty. And how many treaties? I mean, should we add it all up, my knight? Should we add it all up? If it's not theirs to sell, then these are invalid purchases. These are invalid negotiations because the Kunse wasn't at that table. They made that negotiation without his tribe being there. He didn't sign off on this crap, man. This is an Israel... Tragedy, man. It's an Israelite tragedy, man. So to come say organized. 
confederation. <laughs> he wanted to tribe them up to oppose the takeover of 3 million, no, 30 million acres of land, which were obtained by the Fort Wayne Treaty 1809. So that dragon that came, that comet that came was like, all right, man, <laughs> enough is enough. Here's your chance to tribe up. That was our chance. We decided to go with the Treaty of Pieces and Friendship. A lot of our tribes, you know, went with the Moorish treaties, right? This is how you know for sure it's a more and more war when you talk America. Yeah. Who's peace though, right? Who's peace? The peace for Morocco. And they say, Morocco's here, boss. Morocco's right here. <laughs> right. You can't have it both ways. Morocco's here. Okay. I'm going to take you at your word for it. So this treaty has everything to do with you right here. And you made friendship with the United States Corporation. And the majority of the Cherokee, they made peace, right? Shikamagwa had to be like, nah, man, <laughs> I'm going to peace you out. Shikamagwa had to separate from these hijacks that wanted to make peace. They had to make a separation. They had to deviate from the plan, from that whack-ass vibration of thievery. This is what they call in the American Revolutionary War. The definition of a revolution is a complete change. A complete change that gave peace to the hijack and destruction to the Naga. And those that were on the sides of these treaties were on the sides of the destruction of our Nagas that chose to separate because the majority of these Cherokee which is a broad, you know what I'm saying, very indistinct kind of title that a lot of people try to fall under, just like more. <laughs> it just means we the people, right? We the people. You could say Hebrews, and the Moors would just slide up under that too. We're Hebrews too, boss. You know, our relative is Abraham, but you're not the seed of Abraham. Because Moab and Lot are the seed of Abraham's, or excuse me, Moab and Ammon <laughs> are the seed of Abraham's nephew Lot, man. You, you're the seed of Lot. Cool. We could work together if we're on the same page, but don't come with this hijack, man. The blessing of Abraham and his seed, he protected Lot for a long time, but Lot had to go his own way. <laughs> You come over here with your treaties and you want us to be nice to you when we figure this out. Now, while Dragon Canoe is over there popping off against the hijack, Tecumse is fighting beside Dragon Canoe against the hijack. The greater body in there wanted to make peace with the Americans. What does that sound like? The treaties of peace and friendship. I'm not even going to click on it. It makes me sick to my stomach. You click on it. You see what it is. You see what it is, man. 1787, right? Right on the head bone again. America's been at war. 100% of the time.
93%? No, I think 100%. I'm thinking 100%. What do y'all think? Yeah. So, 1787, that this Treaty of Peace and Friendship was made, it's right in the heart of things for the Shikamagwa. They're at war because they want to preserve their land. And the Shikamagwa War was the first 20 years of battle when the hijack arrived. So they had to make their decision quick. You gonna rock with the hijack, or you gonna rock with the cons? Here comes the common 1811. Here comes the Kumsay's War popping off, which was a continuation of all the Shikamaga War we just saw. All this death was continuing. And it continued far after that. More Cherokee Indian War, Seminole, same thing, Creek, right? Same thing. So when did you have time to be a slave if you're fighting the hijack? I I'll wait. <laughs> How can you be a good slave? That's why they say Indians don't make good slaves, because you keep fighting back. You keep rebelling. <laughs> rebelling. You keep re revolting, having a revolution. It wasn't just Nat Turner on the slave plantation. <laughs> it was everybody fighting. Texas Indian Wars are you, my nigga. The conflict in Mexico is on you. Invading Mexico is invading you, my nigga. They're invading you. Philippines are you. Banana Wars are you. Kept that going until they got tired <laughs> of these uh, jungle wars like Vietnam, right? Which we never won that. So they had to make a deal. Then comes World War II and the Cold War. And these are the ones we hear about in history class. Oh, the Cold War, World War this. Where's World War One, man? It was them fighting you right here. Banana Wars, right? Invading Mexico. Yeah, okay. You still find the same Shikamagua. You still find the same Cherokee. The ones that didn't make no deals for, for peace with the hijack and friendship with the hijack. So that the hijack's enemy got to be our enemy now. And then I guess we're your enemy too, my Nagas, right? Niggas that look just like me, now, now you're on the other side because you got promised some land. You got promised some shiny things. Did it work out for you, my nigga? Oh, that's you in the background, huh? That's you behind the veil. That's you still running things, huh? Just faded to black, huh? <laughs> faded wickedness. We talking to Kumsay War. But the pop offness again, 1776. The barber, remember the barbar is the swan. Remember the barbar, swan. We're talking swan knights, man. They came and found knights here. They found infrastructure. They didn't find nobody that didn't know how to build things. They found civilization when they found you. They found the promised land when they found the Shikamagwa. These Shikamagwa. Made no deal, separated from the greater body of Cherokee. So all these Nagas, y'all want to make deals? We ain't going to give up our land. We're not going to make peace. No, no, no. Get these treaties of peace and friendship out of our face. 1787, 1787. 
1787. So y'all been doing peace on the head bone of Dragon Canoe? Y'all been doing peace on the head bone of the comb saying the tribe? Because we didn't want to give up no more land? This is what the Kunsei is fighting for, man. This is what it's all about. His brother, a religious leader called the Prophet, Hebrew Khan, since we know that this is an Israel Indian tragedy. Because you couldn't tribe up, right? That's a tragedy to the Most High. So we got hundreds more years of captivity because we didn't want to try, but because we had that much envy and covetous and thirst for blood, black on black crime been popping off, man. It was a more and more war because this is Morocco with these treaties over here. This is Morocco making treaties on who? Morocco is making treaties on Israel. I said, I said, Morocco is making treaties of peace and friendship with all hijacks that want to invade, search out, and vanquish us, Papabu, doom diverses, and steal millions of acres of land at a time. So if you want to fight against this, you're fighting against the corporation. And the corporation is making a deal with the more in America. And the Kumse had to fight against his own Nagas that sided with the corporation because they fell for the promises. They said, you know, this person didn't do nothing to me. They just picking on y'all. The whole time they've been covered is for the promised land. The whole time these other tribes been covered is for what the Kumse has by birthright. We tired of you leading us. We tired of being uh, submissive to you as our leader. Same thing he did with Preston John, Genghis Khan. We're tired of paying tribute to you. He's the Khan of Khans. So they crown themselves kings. They chose to make peace with the hijack. They chose to make peace with the hijack. They chose to make peace with the hijack, stealing millions of acres of land at a time. And it became an Israelite tragedy for the promised land to just go up and smoke like this, man. And the prophet was run down on when Tecumseh went up to Ontario Ontario, Canada, Canada, the tribe up with some Nagas over there, right? <laughs> he tried to get some more recruits up there. And while he was gone, Harrison and them attacked Prophet's town. And that's when they murdered Tecumseh's brother, the Prophet, and many more, who just wanted to fight, not because we picking on people, but they got tired of giving up their promised land. Treaty by treaty, treaty by treaty. The hijack couldn't have done this without your help, Morocco. The hijack couldn't have conquered Israel without your help, Morocco. You slayed the prophet, Morocco. He gained fame when he foretold the total eclipse of the sun. This is what we're talking about, right? On June 16th, 1809, they had learned about it in advance from a team of visiting astronomers. During this time, the governor of Indiana Territory, William Henry Harrison, worried about the prophet's popularity had challenged him to produce a miracle. After that day, the black sun, the brothers 
had no trouble attracting followers. Hawa always gives us these signs, and for those that see clearly, the hijack, you know, is astounded at these things. <laughs> but now the hijack's trying to tell us about the signs, right? Which again was predicted by the prophet. Why not? We're talking about a prophet of Israel. The brother's center of operations was at Prophet's Town, located near the junction of the Wabash and the Tippecanoe Rivers in northern India. Tecumseh was traveling and recruiting warriors among the southeastern tribes when Governor Harrison attacked Prophet's Town with over 1,000 men on November 6, 1811, a pre of strike by the U.S. The same U.S. that you made a deal with, Morocco? And what if Morocco was there to protect us? What if Moab and them, what if the Canaanites and them were there to protect us instead of, oh, you know, Moses stole our land. Joshua was the robber. He stole our land. You were taught that we stole your land. Maybe you forgot this is India Superior. Maybe you forgot this is Ania Kaleluz Sibola. Hebrew promised land. And the 12 tribes are always in effect. Right here, baby. Right here. You can't access out for a maximum. For Ham and Kush, Ham and Kush. No, that becomes an Indian. Israel tragedy. And then Dragon Canoe was back door. <laughs> Skid Gusta was back door by whoever he tribed up with. Dragon Canoe's forces were sometimes joined by the Upper Muskogee, Chickasaw, Shawnee. That's why Tecumseh was rocking with him and Indians from other tribes along with British loyalists. Remember who these Brits are. These are other Hebrews right there in Brit British or uh, the UK today, you know, Scotland. All these are Nagas. So we had Nagas both sides of Antioch. France, we had the Franks, right? The Cherokee American Wars lasted more than a decade after the end of American Revolutionary War. During that time, Dragon Canoe became a preeminent war leader among the Indians of the Southeast. So he had the Khan. He served as war chief, Skid Gusta, of the great of the group known as the Shikamagua Cherokee or Lower Cherokee from 1777 until his death in 1792. Dragon Canoe died February 29, 1792 at Running Watertown from exhaustion or possibly a heart attack. Stop it, man. He didn't fought the hijack on the front line all these years, and now you're going to say he was exhausted after dancing all night? You couldn't come up with a better story than this? He was getting his boogie on? He was getting his boogie on? He couldn't survive that, but he survived... 15 straight years of war on the front line leading the charge and he got exhausted from dancing and celebrating what y'all believe this hype the recent conclusion of an alliance who did he just recently try up with this is who you gotta <laughs> look into is who possibly backdoor to come 
or Dragon Canoe, right? And continue to backdoor to Kumsay. Who did the treaties of peace and friendship? Who did who did the Kumsay have to fight against? We read before, we know. <laughs> he had to fight against the Muskogee. Now they had upper lower, so not all Muskogee. He had to fight against the Choctaw and push Mata high on them, right? Push Mata, I was like, no, we ain't gonna follow you. These white people never did nothing to us. <laughs> That's what he said. But we know that doesn't go for all the Choctaw. So, you know, we're not putting everybody in no basket. We're just saying this is where the back door. <laughs> in the higher ups could have possibly come from. He's celebrating with the Muscogee. He's celebrating with the same Choctaw that made the treaties of peace and friendship that did the deals, man. That did the deals. I know. I said it makes me sick. I just want you to see it, okay? <laughs> I just want you to see. I just want you to read it. Make sure you know what it looks like. If either party should be at war with any nation and take a prize belonging to that nation, and there shall be found on board subjects or effects belonging to either parties, the subjects shall be set at liberty and the effects returned to the owners. And if any goods belong to any nation with whom either the party shall be at war, shall be loaded on that, they got to be so nice to each other. If you find our stuff, you're going to give us our things. So let's say you were a slave to the United States, and they found you escaping. Now you got Buffalo Soldier. <laughs> yeah. Niggas that look just like you hunting you down. To bring you back to the massa. Because the treaty says their enemies are your enemies. If either party shall be at war, right? We're talking to Kumsay war. With any nation, Israel, right? <laughs> the other party shall not take a commission from the enemy, nor fight under their colors. So they couldn't help us if they wanted to. If we paid him to, if we gave him a commission to say, please help us from this corporation of hijacks, they say, nah, well, we can't because we made a deal. We made a deal, boss. If any more, uh oh. <laughs> uh oh, Morocco. If any more shall bring citizens of the United States or their effects to His Majesty, the citizens shall immediately be set at liberty and the effects restored. <sighs> so let's say we're at war with them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and then they capture our captive. They they could re then return. The hijack we capture, they're going to return him back to his majesty. Back to the U.S. <laughs> In like manner, if any more, not a subject of these dominions shall be, shall make prize of any of the citizens of America or their effects and bring them into any of the ports of his majesty, they shall immediately release. So now you got the Moorish shield. This is why they can work with the law, right? In the courts, because they're still going off these treaties, man. You can't harm me. We made a deal. That's what they're really saying. They shall immediately be re immediately released, and they will then be considered as under his majesty's protection. This is how they're friends with each other. This is sickening, man. These moors, man. <laughs> you made a deal with the devil. You did friendship with the devil. And look at the year, boss, 1786. This is what led up to this final throwdown with the Kumsay. This is what this dragon comet was all about. 1786, we in the mix, man. 1786, we in the midst of the Shikamago War. Oh, don't make war against... 
You can't make war against our friends, and we can't make war with your friends, but our enemies, your enemies. This is what this damn sick treaty was all about. This is the war we're talking about. It's the war we're talking about, man. It was the war for the land, man, the promised land. That promised land became a tragedy because of your treaties. The Dragon Canoe made a recent alliance with the same folk that was going to make those deals with the hijack. And suddenly he's celebrating a recent victory by one of their war bands against the Cumberland Settlements, and he was succeeded as chief by John Watts. Somebody, they probably tried to slide in there. Historians such as John P. Brown and Old Frontiers and James Mooney in his earthquake ethnographic book, Myths of the Cherokee considered him a role model for the younger Tecumseh, who was a member of the Shawnee band living with the Cherokee and taking part in their wars. <coughs> and tell them they lie, a book written by a direct descendant of Sequoia named Traveler Bird both Tecumseh and Sequoia are stated to have been among his young wars. So when we look at these Chickamauga Wars, Tecumseh was there. Tecumseh's always been there. And these are what they call their great revolutionary wars, where they... <laughs> were slaying Israelites from 1776. We know it started well before that with Columbus in there. Columbus rode up with a Hebrew interpreter because he was ready to pop off the war. He was ready to make it an Israel tragedy. They rode up on the prophet in prophet's town, man. Northern Indiana. Tecumseh was traveling and recruiting warriors along the southeastern tribe. See, he, he was still tribing them up when Governor Harrison attacked Prophet's Town, Prophet's Town, with over a thousand men, November 6, 1811, which wouldn't have happened if we were tribed up, right? A preemptive strike by the United States Corporation, which they were friends and making peace with the hijack, which marked the beginning of the Tecumseh War. On December 16th, when the earthquakes began, Tecumseh was at the Shawnee and Delaware Indian villages near Cape Gerardo, 50 miles north of the epicenter at New Madrid. The earthquakes continued as he traveled back to Prophetstown, arriving there in February 1812. Tecumseh's followers lost the Battle of Tippecanoe, but they continued to fight as allies of the British during the War of 1812 between the United States and Great Britain. Tecumseh was killed in battle in Canada in 1813. He is honored as one of the greatest Indian leaders, Naga leaders, both in the United States and in Canada, where he is considered a national hero. But don't consider him a hero now because you were fighting against him. <laughs> you were fighting against him. All he wanted was his land back. So whose hero is he? He could only be the hero of the Nagas that wanted their land back. And that would make it an Israel problem, an Israel tragedy. So he can only be the hero, the true hero of Israelites and those that, you know, are tribed up with Hawa's chosen ones, man. That's the only way that can work. Don't make him your hero now, man. You know, you got the drive, get the drive, man. You got the drive, get the drive. So 
So it says his name is Shooting Star. Great comment. <laughs> we know that these stars are meteors. All right, so let's pay attention to this comment. What they call the Coombsays comment or Napoleon's comment. <laughs> And it was a big deal. Remember, we got that drop about this comet coming back, right? Fall back in the classroom. We're going to go through a few videos, man. So fall back, enjoy the flow, and surf the way. Go. Did you know that on April 8th, 2024, during the total solar eclipse, a unique celestial spectacle will be visible? This isn't just any celestial event, but the rare appearance of the Devil's Comet. This intriguing comet, discovered way back in 1812, will emerge from the shadows, gracing our skies during this total solar eclipse. Its path will take it near the sun, traversing the constellations Andromeda and Pisces, making this a truly celestial ballet. With an orbital period of approximately 71 years, these visits are few and far between. Around mid-March, it will be closest to the sun in the constellation Aries, and will then head into Taurus, passing near Jupiter mid-April. This comet will be approximately 27 degrees from the Sun and close to bright Jupiter during the eclipse. So, what exactly is this Devil's Comet and why is it making such a grand appearance? Discovered in 1812, the Devil's Comet, also known as Comet Pons Brooks, is a Halley-type short-period comet. With an orbital period of approximately 71 years, this comet has been a celestial wanderer making its round trip from the outermost regions of our solar system to the inner sanctum near our Sun. Come mid-March 2024, the comet will be spotted near the constellations Andromeda and Pisces. But it's during its closest approach to the Sun in April when the comet truly becomes a spectacle. It will traverse the constellation Aries and head into Taurus, passing near Jupiter mid-April. The comet has earned its nickname, the Devil's Comet, from a significant brightening and a distortion of the coma into a horn-like shape after an outburst in July 2023. An ominous sign, some might say. During the eclipse, it will be approximately 27 degrees from the Sun and close to bright Jupiter. Its apparent brightness around this time is expected to be around magnitude 5. The solar corona's glow during the eclipse might make it difficult to spot without binoculars or a telescope, but for those who persist, the sight will be worth it. On April 21st... Or it might be so dark because of totality that you might get a great view of this dragon. <laughs> and they're saying they got the horns, right? Let's go. First 2024... The comet will reach its perihelion, the closest point to the sun, where it will shine at its brightest in the constellation Taurus. But there's more to this comet than meets the eye. In 2024, a remarkable convergence of celestial and cultural phenomena unfolds, as if the universe itself is setting the stage for an extraordinary spectacle. Alongside the total solar eclipse and the rare visibility of the Devil's Comet, we find ourselves at the peak of solar activity marked by an increase in solar flares and sunspots. This cosmic dance is set to the rhythm of the year of the wood dragon, a symbol of strength, luck and health in Chinese astrology. Wow! Yet this is more than a rare celestial alignment. It's a cosmic ballet that may usher in a new era of understanding, a shift in consciousness, a dawn of a new age, the age of Aquarius. The awe and wonder of these events may open our minds to a fresh perspective of the universe and our place within it. Now let's delve into a theory that could potentially change our understanding of space and time. The uniplanetary evolution theory. This theory suggests that our solar system is not just a collection of planets, but Hi different Jack states. City. Hi Jack City. Hi, we see that, but you see all this connectivity and what, what year did it say that they haven't seen it since when? making this a truly celestial ballet. With an orbital period of approximately 71 years, these visits are few and far between. Around mid-March, it will be closest to the Sun in the constellation Aries and will then head into Taurus, passing near Jupiter mid-April. This comet will be approximately 27 degrees from the Sun and close to bright Jupiter during the eclipse. So, what exactly is this Devil's Comet? And why is it making such a grand appearance? Discovered in 1812, the Devil's Comet... 
discovered in 1812. <laughs> so that's when I guess they saw it around the same time as this Tacombe safe flow. Comet, also known as Comet Pons Brooks, is a Halley type short period comet. And two things. One, they say now 71 years, when before they say it was like 3,065 years. So is the dragon coming closer for one final showdown? You know what I mean? <laughs> um, in this Pons Brooks situation last year, when you researched this same comet, they didn't call it Devil's Comet since they said 71 year orbit. So last year when they saw it, apparently, they called it <laughs> Millennium Falcon. Go look it up. Same comet, but it's listed last year as Millennium, Millennial Falcon, like the Star Wars uh, Han Solo spaceship. Hans is the cons. The Hans is the cons, right? <laughs> okay, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> the meteor is a presser, right? That's all I'm going to say. They said 1812, right? Why is it making such a grand appearance? Discovered in 1812, the Devil's Comet, also known as Comet Pons Brooks, is a Halley type short period comet. With an orbital period of approximately 71 years, this comet has been a celestial wanderer, making its round trip from the outermost regions of our solar system. Okay. Everyone got something to say. Now, this apparently is supposed to be, you know, I don't know. I don't know, my nigga. They, they saying this is a close-up of this particular comet right now. <laughs> Let's get it bigger. Shout out to Mar Fugle News. Fair use, everybody. Fair use. We just doing some educational, some recon, you know, chilling out, asking some scientific questions. Don't mind us. Fair use. Copyright 107. All right. Fall back. This, this is a <laughs> hyped up situation, right? And got like three tails. And <laughs> I guess they got the horns, you know. Yeah, yeah, boss. Okay, so this is what they saying. This is supposed to be a real image, close-up image, I guess. You know, this is what they say. Let's get a little bit of this, though. Devil Comet Solar Eclipse. Mar Fugu, take the wheel. Uh, All right, what is going on, guys? It is Adam A.K. Marf, and this is a special episode of Marf Google News. Now, there's a lot to talk about. Of course, everybody is talking about uh, current events. If you're watching the replay later on, uh, just uh, over the night, uh, of course, there was a huge event that just went down on the East Coast in Baltimore. Uh, we won't be talking about that much. We will actually be talking about that on our next show. So that is one not to miss. And make sure to subscribe not only to this channel, but to our other sister channel, Marfugal TV. We're going to be talking about the Devil Comet that out of nowhere got uh, talked about. I mean, it, it seemed to me like it was uh, almost like it was announced uh, right before this uh, eclipse goes down. There's a lot of crazy chatter going on around the eclipse, not only because obviously it's a, a crazy co uh, cosmic event, but it is also something that is... Uh, something there's a lot of threats around there's a lot of movement around we have national guard deploying for it uh, we have of course national guard in new york subways checking bags uh, we have a conflict going on all over the world and now we have a devil uh, comet we're also going to talk about of course uh the devil syndrome or a devil a devil disease that actually uh, basically has you seeing demonic faces is this a disease or does this have some special powers from hey they said you start looking at people who start seeing all their faces change don't that remind me remind you of that uh baruch was it second baruch 51 oh man y'all think oh, y'all think this play play what second baruch say about the changes in their countenance right We putting this together, man. We recon. This is why we here, Drop Nation. This is why we Drop Nation, man. Uh, 
obviously I love this one in chapter 73 because it's just letting you know that whatever's going on has to do with your eternal Shalom. And at the end of the day, because we're talking about the wood dragon, <laughs> that these dragons will come out of their holes, right? To subject themselves to a child or the children, right? So dragons are popping off. They just said the earthquake was so big before snake came out their hole, so dragons are coming out of their holes. <laughs> Come on. Now, hold up. Let's get a uh, chapter 51. It's a great resource here, man. Was, Baruch got the drop, so I'm going to say. Right, so it shall happen in that day. Second Baruch chapter 51, it shall happen in that day when I, which I appointed, is over that both the shape of those who are found guilty as also the splendor of those who have been proved to be righteous will be changed. He's saying some devil disease where people are looking at their friends and family members and their faces are getting distorted, looking all horrible and devilish. They're calling it a disease. He got a medical terminology for this stuff. That people are looking like devils when they're looking at them. And it may be because <laughs> the shape of those who are found guilty is being changed. For the shape of those who act wickedly will be made more evil than it is now, so that they shall suffer torment. But the honor and splendor of the righteous man will be magnified by transformations and the shape of their face will be changed into light of their beauty so that they may acquire and receive the undying world, which is their promise, my God, promise to. So what, what kind of disease are you talking about that suddenly <laughs> the evil is now being shown, the shape of those are being changed, right? Change, right? Let's go. That's cray cray. That's cray cray. Let's go. From up above. I'm also going to give you my uh, kind of crazy thoughts on this, and we're also even going to hit a three body problem, a show that uh, almost has uh, ties to reality in, in one way. Ties to reality, which I just said. Hold up, man. <laughs> Hey, fair use, fair use. Hold up, man. I let, I let him know. Fair use, mofos. Fair use. All right. Fair use. Copyright 107. I'm about to show you a little clip from the, off this next flick. Netflix drop. All right, section 107. You see it, man. All right, we're about to do some criticism, some comments, some teachings, some scholarships, some recon. All right. All right. Leave me alone. Leave us alone. I'm going to play like 10, 15 seconds, man. <laughs> Leave me alone. Fair use. <laughs> but he's supposed to be, these are like super scientists, and they're trying to figure out super physicists. You know what I mean? And they're saying science is broken because of these anomalies in their physics models and all this stuff. And they're losing their minds because they don't believe in a creator. They chose to believe in science. They're atheists. They just believe in science, right? <laughs> Scientology. <laughs> well, this is what he says when science is broken. Fair use. Let's go. Three body problem. Well, your theory is if it doesn't agree with experiment, it's wrong. I think that was Feynman, but yeah. According to the experiments, all of our theories are wrong. Hmm. All of them. All of the physics of the past 60 years is wrong. Science is broken. Ooh, that's all I'm going to play. You get to draw a three-body problem on Netflix. Fair use in your caboose, bum. He said, science is broken, my knock. And what happens when science is broken, they got to go back to the drawing board, or they have to realize the only thing they got left to believe in <laughs> since they avoided it all this time and there's no explanations for anything else the only thing they got left to believe in is Hawa, is the creator 
is the supreme power of all, man. Because science is broken. All right. They they mentioned three body prop. <laughs> so we got a piece. Go get the drop. Fair use. Let's go. So we're going to talk about all of that uh, today on today's Marfugal, t uh, Marfugal News. Uh, before we do, though, remember we're completely independent. If you do want to support us in a great way and protect yourself, go over and check out EMP Shield. If we do have an EMP strike from an adversary or a Carrington-level event from the sun, which we will at some point, this will protect your cars, trucks, motorcycles, boats, pretty much anything that runs, including your generators and your home, even your ham radio you can get a device for against all of those. They will ground the, uh, ground the signal before uh, it fries your device in less than 500 trillionths of a second. It is the same company that's outfitting agencies like DHS, DOD, and the Demso team helping protect the Texas grid. Go to marfuglenews.com slash EMP. Let's bring in my co-host slash internet brother, Dex James. What is going on and how are you doing today? Well, hello, Adam, and hello, Fugal fam. I'm doing just fine. So there's a lot of craziness going on. Obviously, we've got uh, devil comets, devil faces, uh, and the solar eclipse is... A lot of folks are talking about the biblical meaning of that as well. If you don't know, there's it's actually going along a line of uh, at least seven cities. I believe this time it's Nineveh, the last time it was uh, Salem. They, each one, the X that it creates with the last solar eclipse in 2017, creates a, a sort of a, a prophetic event. So this is why it has a lot of buzz. Even if you don't follow biblical prophecy, it's probably pretty fascinating to know that there are so many weird events going on all at the same time. We're going to speak on Jonah and the whale, um, but just listen how they're trying to line it up. You know, with these constellations in Jonah, the whale, and then we're going to get some Jonah drop. So, <laughs> whale. Now, this devil comet, it seemed to me like the other day, all of a sudden, people just knew about it. All of a sudden, everybody's talking about it. And it reminded me of a time during CV when uh, there was a comet that kind of came out of nowhere. Uh, we actually had a comet with the double tail. Do you guys remember that, Dex? Do you remember the, the, ta the two-tailed comet? that I covered back uh, yes. in, I, I, don't, I don't know what year that was, but it. I remember everybody was still, you know, held at home and we were like driving to the, to the national parks just to get out of the house. Mm -hmm. uh, but we actually drove a few hours to go witness that comet. And I took my, my good, good cameras, cameras my, my good lenses, lenses, and I tried to get shots of it. I got, a, I got a couple of good ones. Uh, but I remember that one they said was going to get brighter and brighter and brighter until it was as bright as the moon in the sky. And then all of a sudden, one day, it just disappeared. They said, oh, it broke up. Yeah. And that that is so crazy if you realize how these things are and, and how long they uh, last and how old they supposedly are. You're talking about a, a comet that's been through space for millions and millions of years, possibly, uh -huh. or billions of years. We don't know. Again, th these things are extremely old. And from the time of a Tuesday to a Thursday, it, it broke apart Captain. in front of our human eye. Captain. Like we're watching this thing probably back in time or whatever, and we see the actual breaking up of it. Now, this thing was actually closer. That last one that I'm talking about, uh, this was around the same time that Space Force got put into play. There were all these weird things. They talked about hammer, hypervelocity, velocity, and uh, asteroid <laughs> mitigation emergency vehicles. Uh, that was essentially their one of their plans to... Uh, if a comet or a meteor was coming at us, a nuke on a rocket, launch it and hit it. Uh -oh. uh, Dart, of course, now is a thing. Uh they said a nuke on a rocket, launch it and hit it. Now go research how NASA's throwing three rockets up at this eclipse. What are they trying to hit? Because this comet's supposed to be coming right into play. Like, are they shooting at the eclipse or are they shooting at the dragon? Or are they shooting at whatever dragons are coming out of this portal because of this black sun situation, right? Again, you got the year of the dragon, great total solar eclipse of America <laughs> at the same time. And now I guess the Combsay dragon popping up. If you ain't, even if you ain't into signs, you, <laughs> you might want to put your uh, ether ether coins on this one, man. Uh, double asteroid redirection test that was at last year, and everybody talked about that. Watched it live. Uh, them trying to kinetically redirect a, uh, an asteroid. They have, of course, hyper 
uh, hypersonic detection in space now mm -hmm. with SpaceX's Starlink. If you didn't know this, about one out of every four, they say, can uh, is a detector for hypersonic objects. Uh, and exactly. they kind of said, oh, well, this is for hypersonic missiles. But is th are those actually also for things? They're tracking dragons, Kyle. Things coming from outside of our world. We, during this last few years, had a Muamua, which they aptly dubbed Scout. Now, as far as Scout, it, I, it's always given me the kind of heebie-jeebies because a Muamua not only was just a weird uh, comet or a weird uh, asteroid, whatever, I forget, meteor, whichever one. I know meteor is the one that comes in, but it was something that looked like a cigar, and apparently it sped up on its way out of our universe. It was our first interstellar object. Later on, a couple of years later, we found out it actually wasn't, uh, that it might have been the second or third. But that first one, we, as far as we knew at that time, they said this is an interstellar object. It's the first thing we've ever observed from outside of our universe coming in. And if you look at the map on it and if you look at the 3D visuals, it basically comes by Earth. It go, goes pretty close to Earth cosmically and then zooms out and speeds up on its way out. It was so strange to the point where Avi Loeb, a Harvard professor, said, hey, this is so weird. I almost think that this is an alien. Mm -hmm. And this is when a lot of the very serious talk about aliens started. And that's what's really fascinating about this whole thing is because now this is kind of being taken seriously. We have Congress and congressional meetings being, you know, talking about aliens. Most people think that this is a distraction. Mind you, you watch a show like Three Body Problem and it kind of put, puts in the back of your head, maybe there is something on its way, right? Well, then you look at this comet they call the Devil Comet, and this Devil Comet has uh, some strange characteristics. Apparently, they named it the Devil Comet because it almost looks like horns coming off of it. Dragon. And this thing just kind of pops out of nowhere. And they say it's actually going to be possibly visible during the solar eclipse. Dragon. So there's already millions of people traveling to go see this, this solar eclipse in this whole line across America. Uh, and they might get treated to this other thing. And it makes me think, like, what if the solar eclipse is actually just a, a, it's going to end up darkening up the sky and we'll end up seeing something that we maybe shouldn't have seen or. Bang. Now you got a good look at the dragon. Wouldn't normally see. And they tell us, oh, it's just the devil comet. What the heck is this thing? I, we keep having these kind of events that it's like we've never heard of something like that before. Um, at least I haven't. Now, again, this thing looks crazy. This is supposedly one of the pictures. Uh, as you can see, it's kind of kind of got the uh, crazy aura, and the the red almost looks like red horns, almost. And that's why they've dubbed it the uh, the the Devil Comet. This one actually looks like it almost has three tails. Uh, but again, this is going to be during the whole solar eclipse. It says, don't miss your chance to see the cryovolcanic devil comet. Skygazers have the chance to view more than just a bright planet Mercury or April's total solar eclipse over the next few days. An unusual, quote, devil comet or Comet 12P Ponds Brooks will be visible across the night sky over the next several days and may t make an appearance during the big eclipse on April 8th. Since it only makes one orbit around the sun every 71 years, seeing Ponds Brooks is generally a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. So now we have multiple events going on that are possibly once in a lifetime events. So again, back to that comment that we saw disappear, we actually looked at the lining of, of the US launching secret uh, payloads from actual NASA, SpaceX, they all launched these rockets and we did the math on how fast they say that our rockets go and how far away this comet was and how long, if we were to say hypothetically, the US government saw a comet uh, something coming our way uh, how long would it take to get to this place and this thing was really really close uh, cosmically and it said I, I remember it was like something like a couple years or two and a half years it would take to, to reach this thing and meet up with it and it we went back from when the thing blew up or when the thing kind of broke up and we went back exactly and it was almost the exact time that one of our rockets it uh, launched would take to get there lined up with an actual secret payload that was launched from Earth. Uh, basically a classified payload launched up in the sky. And we thought that was absolutely crazy. Hypothetically, what if that thing was actually heading towards Earth? And before that, they actually sent a rocket up there, did a nuke, and blew the thing up. 
just a side thought. Again, there's been a lot of weird cosmic events. There's been a lot of <laughs> real spill. Just right quick, let's look at this um, eighteen comet of eighteen eleven one more time. Great Comet of eighteen eleven. <laughs> now this joint they say was visible with the naked eye for two hundred and sixty days straight. Had the longest recorded period of visibility into the appearance of hell by. <laughs> And they were tripping about how large this coma was, right? This tail was of this drag. The Great Comet 1811 was thought to have an exceptionally long tail or coma, perhaps reaching over 1 million miles across, 50% larger than the sun. Okay. Then they're connecting it with the New Madrid situation that we were just talking about, 1811. <laughs> uh, it says a report on the first steam ship to descend the Ohio River as it approached the confluence with the Mississippi River states December 18, 1811, the anniversary of this day, the people of Cairo, talking Egypt, boss, Illinois, and its vicinity should never forget it was the coming of the first steamboat to where Cairo now is, the New Orleans, Captain Roosevelt commanding. It was the se severest day of the great throes of the New Madrid earthquake. At the same time, a fiery comet was rushing athwart the horizon. So they're putting it in Cairo, my nigga, right? <laughs> and you got a little Egypt situation happening in 2024. Total American, great, great American eclipse, man. You know what I mean? So it's a lot happening with this Cairo, man. It's a lot happening. Let's get a few more minutes. Out of weird events in general so i thought that this thing is pretty strange that it's coming out of nowhere and they're telling us they're putting national guard which normally are uh, reserved for deploying for emergencies and now they're telling us all of this after, after watching a movie like, like don't look up some people are like ah oh, that's kind of creepy what if this thing's actually not that far away and what if it's gonna hit or something obviously probably not gonna happen but it is something that a lot of folks are thinking about now, as far as the devil face, this is super, super weird. There is an actual syndrome they say just came out. And again, what what's funny is like a lot of folks are talking about this, but it sounds like it's going to be a one uh, or it, this is a single person. Is this person actually seeing demonic entities? Is he seeing the, the evil in people? But it says that it's a condition called prospopetametamorphopsia. Uh, causes facial features to appear distorted, according to researchers. And essentially it says that the um, study published in The Lancet revealed that this 58-year-old gentleman reported seeing faces as distorted or demonic for two and a half years. So all of their friends, all of a sudden they just started seeing these demonic faces, the, the stretched out uh, faces. Now I first saw this, it was actually a video of, of Jacob's. I saw it on the thumb, and he had what what the picture was, and I it, unfortunately, it won't let me uh, look at the thumb, but he has a, a thumb of the movie Smile. The movie Smile actually had, it's a very creepy horror movie, I haven't watched it, but it shows that the woman starts seeing everybody in this, this demonic way. What's so crazy is that this is supposedly actually happening to people. Wow. When people are starting to see a devil face. Wow. What is this? Is this actually a sign of the times that people are starting to see uh, this creepy thing happen? What, what do you think? Let me. I'm glad you asked that question. Is it actually a sign of the times? <laughs> A sign of some prophetic event. And it will happen after this day, which I appointed is over that both the shape of those who are found to be guilty and also the splendor of those who have proved to be righteous. KTC, keeping the code. Exodus 20 got us in code. Most high over everything. Huh? Both shapes are going to be changed. The innocent. And the guilty, my naga. That don't mean you perfect. It means you are not trampling the code. You're not trampling the law. You are hearkening. You are seeking Allah, right? 
for the shape of those who now act wickedly will be made more evil. Managa, look out for it, man. It's happening. <laughs> then it is now so that they shall suffer torment. Do you see clearly? <laughs> Are they seeing clearly? Let me know in the comments down below. A lot of talk about the devil, a lot of talk about demons, and of course, a lot of talk about end times, and all at the same time. Same time. It is quite a trip. Uh, Dex, I, I wanted to pull you in before I go into three-body problem, because I know uh, y you have not been able to see it yet, because it just came out. Uh, but as far as like the devil face, imagine waking up one day and looking at all your friends and family and seeing basically they're stretched into these demonic, demonic forms. Mm. Mm -mm. Uh, yeah, that's got to be creepy. And the other thing is you can look at the face on a two dimensions, like on a printed piece of paper, and it was fine. It was only when looking yeah, at them in real life or in three dimensions, dimensions really? that you would see that. So a uh, very weird uh, experience, I got to say. By the way, I just, I just put two and two together and realized they renamed the devil comet uh -oh. why would they rename it the devil comet but they renamed it you know uh -oh. what you remember you know what it used to be called we covered it it was called the millennium falcon Ooh, you remember no that one? way on solo that is the if you look at the name what? um the uh 12p ponds brooks the technical name it's the same one uh, i gave you a link in the screener if you want it uh, okay. to the old article that we talked about back in july of 23 no way okay and this is in uh this is in screener right okay so correct <laughs> let's see here dragon what, what a trip uh trip. hold on i actually do not see it in screener up next no there we go okay oh there it was there for a second then it disappeared there we go check this out so, so why would they change the name? That doesn't make any sense. I, I... There's a big government scandal going on that you need to know about it. The government is actually stealing money from unsuspecting property owners. Let me explain. Every day the government forecloses on 3,000 or more property owners oh, wow. because they've fallen behind in their property taxes. City. This amounts to roughly $14 million in tax foreclosure. Hi, Jack City. Here we go. I, I, I don't I've never seen them do that before a Millennium Falcon shaped comet heading towards Earth so bright You'll be able to see it with your name. How's it a millennium millennial Falcon shaped comet though? You know what I mean? That means it looking like a spaceship or a bird or a Dragon now they calling it devil's comet or dragon shaped oh. comet heading towards Earth so bright You'll be able to see it with your naked eye. This was July 27th, 2023. Why did they change this? And why now do they call it the Devil Comet? That is so weird. Yeah, this is it. The same one. Pawns Bricks. I thought that that looked familiar. And you know what else is really, really kind of strange? Um, as far as uh, this one and, and all of these others, it's like now... They're coming up with all these missions to go to space. Obviously, you have Elon Musk uh, coming up with a mission. He says he's going to get a million people to Mars by 2029 or 2030. It's like, why are they all doing this? Why are all these celebrities building bunkers like something is about to happen? It is quite a trip. Now, uh, this was also on March 22nd. This, this came across, I believe, a Fugle fam member uh, tagged me in it. And I can't, I'm sorry, I'll try to try to shout you out later but somebody tagged me in this on twitter nasa gets ready for asteroid as big as the empire state building to hit earth Ugh. this is all this was a day before the news broke about the devil comet it says an asteroid bigger than the empire state building is on a direct collision course with earth according to nasa dubbed bennu the massive 4.5 billion year old space rock is expected to make a close flyby in the year 2182 <laughs> Now, of course, if it's in 2182, nobody cares, right? In general, nobody cares if they said it was in 2200 or in any year, right? Uh, but as far as if it's out past a couple years, nobody really cares. You kick, you kick the rock down. But we have had several instances over the last five years where all of a sudden either an asteroid hit, uh, a meteor hit, or it passed us by, and we did not see it until afterwards. Mostly it's the ones that they say come from the direction of the sun.
Uh, we had one that actually landed and went into the ocean, and they said that they didn't see it until after it hit. Uh, they didn't. They didn't. They didn't discover it until about three hours after. There was another one they didn't discover until two hours before, Ugh. and it luckily passed by because it was a much bigger one. But that's the trippy part about this whole thing is they are now actively trying to prepare for an event like this, and not just they as in the U.S., but other countries as well. They're all coming up with their own systems, and not to mention now they're making a grin around Earth. This is where it comes into the three-bottom problem. I, I don't know if any of you have seen this yet. A lot of you may not because... They tripping, man. They running scared. They they going crazy. <laughs> There's dragons coming in. They can't even like detect them. They like, oh, I didn't even see that coming. Yeah, you know I mean, like all their technology, supersonic measures, they can't even detect it, man. That's the problem. Because <laughs> it is on Netflix. Uh, but uh, the three body problem is a trip in itself. Uh, but there are some parts of that that essentially kind of relate to what is going on. Without spoiling that show, uh, again, there's some very strange things there that actually line up with what is happening now. Even in part of the show, it actually shows uh, JB, our, our current prez, uh, creating a, a force to essentially uh, protect the global safety of everything. Which we actually currently, I think we have something along those lines, like the global planetary defense something or other. Uh, but imagine that that does happen in the next couple of years because of something that's heading our way. And, and then, of course, all of the talk about extraterrestrials and aliens in the congressional terms of things and all of this. Everybody just is, uh, says it's a distraction, and it probably is. But it's definitely worth a thought path to go down and really go down some of the rabbit holes. Now, there's a lot of really, really scary stuff happening right now. So if you are easily anxious, I probably would not, not tune into tonight's show. Uh, tonight, we're going to talk about the event that just happened uh, off of Baltimore. And it's actually way more serious than a lot of people are thinking. People think, oh, it's just a... Yeah, yeah man. You know, prayers to the families of everybody affected, man, by these hijacks, you know, making these moves and creating you know, something for you to put your energy into, whether it's real or this or that, you know what I mean? Like either way, you, it, it tugs at your heart, you know what I'm saying? Your emotions and your energy. And it's all by design. Shout out to Gospel Lesson. You know, <clears throat> excuse me, this might get new testy, you know what I mean? But it's all right. I'm going to guide you through it if they try to, you know, hijack us into some new tune. But, you know, let, let's... Let's get the babies out the bathwater the best we can to see how all this connects with this Nineveh drop. Because now they're saying that this path of uh, totality is going over Nineveh. A bunch of cities named Nineveh, right? So it got us back in the book of Jonah, right? <laughs> Let's go. Put out my video on whether or not the April 8th, 2024 eclipse was a sign of the second coming or not. I had no idea it would get the kind of response it did, both positive and negative. And when they say second coming, try to bring you into JC, just think about her wild return. All right. Dodge the hijack. And by the way, if you haven't watched that video, this is almost like a follow up to that video. And so I'd suggest you watching that one first. But some of the comments were that I didn't address some of the events that people feel are significant related to this coming eclipse. One of the major ones that people cited is that the April 8th, 2024 eclipse will pass over seven cities named Nineveh. So let's discuss why people feel this is so significant and the legitimacy of these claims as signs of the second coming. First, what does Nineveh have to do with the eclipse at all? You may remember the story of Jonah in the Bible. He is called by God to go preach repentance to the city of Nineveh. This call was more than Jonah thought he could handle. Nineveh was considered the most wicked city at the time. Rather than going east to Nineveh, he went west and got on a ship, likely in the Mediterranean. There was a great storm, and through casting of lots, they determined that the storm was the fault of Jonah, who volunteered to jump overboard. He was then swallowed by a whale or some kind of sea creature and was in the belly for three days until it spit Jonah out on the shore. Come on, man. Feeling rebuked by God, he decided to fulfill his mission and go to Nineveh, where he cried repentance to the city, including the king. And then... I mean, don't you love these hijack images? Like, these are the real Hebrew. 
<laughs> straight Europeans are the real Hebrews. Like, only a hijack would put their images on your stories, man. Because we don't do this to them. Because they don't have no stories that's cool enough for us to act like we're them. But all this Roman history, Greek history, Egypt, Israel, you know, uh, Native American, all this got to do with copper color con. And they rewrote all this stuff. Chinese, Japanese, all these are melanated kind. Hijack city. And then he went outside the city walls and essentially waited for Nineveh to be destroyed as he didn't believe his preaching would work. But come to find out, those in the city did repent and were spared. Think about how strange that is, that a Gentile heathen city, steeped in wickedness and abominations, would repent after a so-called prophet from their enemy preaches in their capital city. Now, one possible explanation for this, and to be honest, I really like it, although I have no idea if it is true, is that the Bur Sagal eclipse occurred over the Assyrian capital city of Nineveh as Jonah preached. Okay, okay. Because eclipses are on perfectly defined cycles, we know that an eclipse happened on June 15th, 763 BC, over what we believe was ancient Nineveh. Not to mention, it is written in their histories. We aren't sure of the dates Jonah preached in Nineveh, but most scholars believe it was between 773 and 755 BC. So yes, within that 18-year window, this famous Assyrian eclipse did happen, and perhaps it happened while Jonah preached, convincing the king and the Assyrian people they really did need to repent. I honestly can't think of any other reason why a foreign heathen people, known as the most wicked and violent in the world at the time, would listen to an enemy prophet unless something like an eclipse actually happened. I mean, can you imagine a Muslim? And the way you know the, the most high rock, Al, it must have been some real Hebrews in that city. You know what I'm saying? Because most high never just rocked out for a city that has no rooting of Israel at all. You know what I'm saying? So... All this was out of AI for you, my nigga. We're going to get this a little a little deeper, man, <laughs> in the lexicon in a second. Let's get it. Muslim guy showing up in the Bible Belt in America, telling people that if America doesn't repent, then Allah is going to destroy us all. And as a result of that, we actually repent? I mean, in an ancient world where they don't know when and where eclipses are going to happen, something like that would be about the only thing that could convince people that they should repent. So I think it is plausible that an eclipse accompanied Jonah's preaching. Now, why does this matter today? Well, there is a prophecy from Christ himself in Matthew 12, where the scribes of the Pharisees ask Christ for a sign, and his answer is in verse 39, which says, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. And there shall no sign be given to it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas, meaning Jonah. Someone way more studious than me has since discovered that directly above the April 8th, 2024 eclipse uh -oh. is the constellation Cetus, which is the whale. So the whale ties us to Jonah, which ties us to the Matthew 12 prophecy, which ties us to the story about Nineveh and the warning of destruction. Then we learn from these same individuals that the eclipse will pass directly over seven cities named Nineveh. And to further emphasize the point, they tell us that there are only seven cities named Nineveh in the United States, and it passes over all of them. That is a compelling narrative with signs in the heavens, prophecies, and biblical parallels, which is the modus operandi of God. But how legitimate is all of this? Seven is such a great number, especially when people spoke so much about how during the 2017 full eclipse over America, it passed through seven cities named Salem, which means peace. We don't need to get into the biblical numerology of seven here. So when the 2024 eclipse occurs, creating an X, and the other path is directly over seven cities of Nineveh, which is a warning of destruction, it can be an X over America, making the end of peace. Also, to be clear, half of the internet is a buzz about the seven cities of Nineveh, while the other half of the internet is saying that there are six cities named Nineveh. I think six is compelling for them because of the mark of the beast being the number 666. Someone has calculated that between the two full eclipses, there is six years, six months, six weeks, and six days between them. So when you add that there are six cities named Nineveh in the direct path of the eclipse, that sounds very ominous, which in modern days means it goes viral on social media. The reality is there are actually eight cities in the U.S. named Nineveh and one in Canada. 
Only two of the cities named Nineveh, the ones in Indiana and Ohio, are the ones in the direct path of the full solar eclipse. But I can see why somebody would want to fudge the numbers just a bit, because look at how close some of the other cities are to the full eclipse. The ones in Missouri and Virginia aren't anywhere near the full path, but the rest of them are really close. And if you include the one in Canada, that would be seven. Or if you exclude the one in Canada, that would be six. So if you hear that there are only six or seven cities named Nineveh in the U.S., that is simply wrong. If we are strictly only counting yeah. cities in the... I mean, come on. It's, it's close enough, Bo. <laughs> Let's go. Direct path meaning people in those cities will see the full eclipse, then only two of the cities fall into that category. If we open it up to cities that will see the full eclipse or a partial eclipse, then it would be all eight U.S. and one Canadian cities named Nineveh. But keep in mind, if you open it up to cities that will see a full or partial eclipse, that would include every city in the United States. But there's also the claim of the six years, six months, six weeks, and six days between eclipses. If someone finds it significant that 6666 is similar to 666, then look, I totally get it. But in reality, it is six years, seven months, and 18 days between eclipses. And even if you take one of the months, making it six months rather than seven, adding 28 to 31 days, then depending upon which month you choose to convert to weeks, we add those days to the remaining 18 days, which equals 46 to 49 days which we divide by seven to get six weeks, taking 42 of the remaining 46 to 49 days, leaving four to seven days, depending upon which month we converted to weeks. So if we chose April, June, September, or November, because these months have 30 days in them, then we truly get six years, six months, six weeks, and six days between eclipses, but only because there are two leap years between these two eclipses as well. Keep in mind we use the Gregorian calendar our current calendar system to calculate all of that but when John the Revelator talked about the mark of the beast and 666 in the book of Revelation he was using either the Jewish calendar also called the Hebrew calendar which is based on lunar cycles or the Julian calendar so I'm not sure how much we can rely on our calendaring system to map all of that not to mention the extra six on it and stretching out a month into weeks to make it all work but what about the prophecy in Matthew 12 and the collation of Cetus? Well, Christ himself tells us when the prophecy will be. Hold up, hold up, man, hold up. Because one of these tribes literally said that uh, it was calculating the new year and different things, and people celebrate on different days. Hey, man, Baruch Pesach, man, we got a beautiful Passover coming in, coming in hot. Uh, one of these did all this math and he led up to um april 8th being the actual new year in 2024 you know so all this is <laughs> other than it being year of the dragon year of the wood dragon <laughs> uh the kumsay comet kumsay dragon popping off you know what i mean at the same time as the great american solar eclipse it's also popping off possibly on the actual day of the Hebrew New Year in 2024, April 8th. And regardless of when you popping off, you popping off, but that's just somebody, another researcher's recon, and that's cray cray, right? <laughs> Either way, man, <laughs> happy New Year, con, it's all happening. Let me see the last couple, last minute of this, see if you talk about it. You know, something went down. <laughs> Uh, it's actually much worse than that. Uh, when you realize the importance of what they just, or what what just got taken out on accident, uh, it is. It, this is. It, we're in a secret conflict right now. That's my opinion. Uh, but we're going to talk about that. Uh, Dex. Yeah, I, I I think we need to touch back on this. I think it's really weird they renamed this comment. That's just really strange. Let's get it from here. Uh, yeah, and I, I don't know why we didn't think of it sooner, but, uh, you know, I just noticed, you know, that the name, and I was like, I know that name from somewhere. And I had to look up a past show, and sure enough, man, we had covered it before, but I guess it comes around every year. But why would they name it this? Why would they change the name? I don't know. It's super weird. Uh, good catch. And uh, by the way, go check out Jacob's video. He's over on marfuglenews.com slash friends, and the video is called The Great Deception is Here. Uh, that's the one that he talks about that. Uh, that it was put out yesterday. So go check it out. Again, Again one of our good friends, Jacob Israel, 
uh, and he is over on marfuglenews.com slash friends. Same with the mods as well. Go check out their channels. Again, J- uh, Jacob Israel is about halfway. All right, all right, all right. Let's get the rest of this, and then I actually remember which link it was, so we still got to get there. We still got to get there. Still got a little ways to go. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to, you know what I'm saying, accumulate all this drop, my noggin, you know, <laughs> so you can have a great Shabbat and just kick back and meditate on it and meditate on Hawaii, man, the greatness of our creator, pop it off. will be fulfilled in the next verse in Matthew 12:40 which says for as Jonas was 3 days and 3 nights in the whale's belly so shall the son of man be 3 days and 3 nights in the heart of the earth Christ is using what happened to Jonah being 3 days in the belly of the whale to illustrate when Christ will come forth out of the tomb resurrected he's telling the scribes of the Pharisees that he is no worse than when he rises from the grave having over- you ain't coming with no no back end, you're just saying, yeah, this is going to refer to JC in three days. You're just putting this with something that this is called syncreteness. <laughs> three days of darkness has nothing to do with JC, man. <laughs> now, aside from the hijack, will there be a three day dark period? You know, whether we talk about this eclipse or coming up, I don't know. Uh, you know, some said, or some people wanting to get lots of food and water just in case, you know, the grid goes down. Three days of darkness. I don't know, my dog. I ain't prophesying. We recon, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so be prepared anyway, is what we say. All right, man. He, he, he just, you know, he's doing too much over here. So let's keep it going. We got a lot to cover anyway. We got a lot to do anyway. All right. Now this drop. I might have to, we might have some subtitles, but I'm just going to get a couple minutes of this. This is going to kind of bring in a lot of the um, connectivity of what's happening with the, you know, astronomical situation, astrological situation. Um, you know, where the planets are, what they're doing and all this. We, we know we're on a flat plane. Just get the dropout, Monaga, because sometimes they be telling on themselves. Shout out the secrets of the universe. Fair use, fair use. Let's go. be four degrees away from Hamal. Our comet 12P will likely appear fuzzy and may have a faint green tail. Free Phoenix. <laughs> Telescopes, binoculars will surely enhance the view, providing more detail. You can use one of the space apps given in the description to locate the planets and comet. Okay, maybe that's a good resource. April 6th is a triple conjunction. That's two days. I guess that's today. Is, it, is that today? 27 day old moon will pass close to Mars and Saturn. So, this is what's happening around the situation. Look for them in the eastern sky before sunrise. Saturn and Mars will be equally bright. So, that should be happening like today. You know, this is happening around Shabbat, right? April 7th, uh, lunar occult, occultation. All right, all right. The moon will pass in front of Venus, temporarily hiding the planet from view. Interesting. I mean, stuff you could look at, especially if you got a telescope. Uh, the oculation will be visible from a small part of the world as shown. For the rest of the world, the two will appear extremely close to each other in the dawn sky. April 7th, moon at Perigee. Okay. This is happening right before the eclipse. The moon will reach its closest point to the Earth, appearing slightly bigger than usual. April 8th, total solar eclipse. Pink pap. It's all happening. Total solar eclipse will sweep across North America on April 8th. Now, someone said the next one is not until like 
2040-something. All right, so it's going to be a minute. Partial eclipse will be visible from 48. Contic. Contic. I guess states, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Dodge is hijacked. So you just see what's happening around. I just want to, you know, kind of show you what's happening leading up to it and maybe some things happening right after. After we dodge this hijack. And I apologize, I'm chilling outside right now, getting some nice, beautiful sunlight, man. So my internet might be slower than usual because I got my laptop outside. <laughs> but uh, I got y'all. If it gets crazy, I'll go back inside. I got you. I got you. All right, so you got a partial eclipse will be visible from 48 contiguous states. All right. The maximum duration of totality will be four minutes and 28 seconds. Four and a half minutes. 652 million people in the world's population will be exposed to the eclipse. Moments before totality, viewers can witness Bailey's beads and the diamond ring effect. There can be a noticeable decrease in the temperature as the moon covers the sun. Okay. Or we got the black sun. <laughs> During totality, the sun's corona will become visible to the naked eye as a pearly white crown. That's why they say, oh, Jesus. <laughs> Stop playing. Totality is the only time you can see the eclipse with the naked eye. <laughs> For every other phase of the eclipse, make sure you put on your glasses. I can't tell you to do that, cuz. I'm going to leave it up to you. You know what I mean? The Eclipse Timer app in the description will notify you if the phase's timing is according to your place. Because, hey, you might be popping off. You know what I mean? <laughs> During totality, as the sky darkens, 360 twilight stars and planets, or the comet, the devil's comet, right? Jupiter will be on the left of the sun, Venus on the right, Mars and Saturn. Farther away, Comet 12P, Palm 